I think we're live. What up traders? What up investors? Thank you for tuning in for a live stream today. I know it's a Tuesday. Uh, it's coming towards the end of the year. People are probably not even paying attention to the market. I don't know. Like I wanted to do a live stream more or less to kind of get some things racked out of my head, uh, share some ideas that are kind of uh, moving around this little hard-headed uh, little monkey brain here um, and to share that uh, potentially so what, what I'm looking at um, if it's a dumb silly idea or not um, and then really just kind of look at some charts on what the, some of the viewers wanted to look at I know a lot of people have been putting uh, uh, talking about NIO and then DM is one that have gotten a numerous amounts of requests about I <laughs> did I'm glad you're making some great swing trades in uh, DMC8282, of course, uh, my favorite uh, username there. What's up, Ken? What's up? I'm sorry. I am Ken. Sorry. PEMEN51, thank you for coming by. Yes, NNDM has been fantastic. Um, finally, uh, that is something to be really good out for. Mr. Bear, what's up? What's up, my friend? GTFO. <laughs> yeah, this again, I'm kind of just watching the markets. <sighs> again, no crystal ball here. I don't think anyone does have a crystal ball, but seeing on how the year ends, I think some people felt a little bit of pressure today on some of their portfolios due to the fact of a lot of selling. Um, especially in the high growth names, uh, of course, uh, we can kind of <clears throat> look at like Etsy was kind of came up oh, if I can type here. Etsy really came down today, but guess where it came down to the 21 EMA. So, yeah, an interesting one. So let, let's go to DMC 8282. So it was NNDM. Of course, they just had another offering, right? I think it was around seven fifty or eight dollars. DMC eighty two, uh, definitely <laughs> looking for that. Um, that again, um, having this as a pretty pretty substantial trend here. Um, really, I don't know if this is just complete like FOMO with a lot of people, or this is actually folks that are actually investing in it or just kind of trading in it. Yes, the volumes have increased over the last coming weeks due to the fact of really its popularity really growing across um, the, the spectrum, really. Again, this stock was 50 cents in March, okay? And now it's nearly, it's it hit $10. So um, it's insane, right? It really insane. With this trend with NNDM, can it continue to go? Yes, the short-term support is going to be coming around eight dollars, uh, and then some stronger support right below the parabolic SAR dots and the twenty-one EMA, kind of slightly above the thirty-four here, would be around seven dollars, and then stronger support coming all the way down to six dollars. So, <clears throat> yeah, it, a lot of the offerings have been going bullish because they've. They have done how many offerings in the last like month and a half, two months, maybe like three, three offerings, right? They raised uh, quite a bit of cash there. So interesting to see what they do. Um, playing this with some stock and some option leaps with this one uh, definitely would be an interesting one on how this one really kind of comes through forth. Because this is again, this falls into the speculative bucket where this is not like a uh, an Amazon or like an AMD, like not saying those stocks are better than this one. This is just a little bit more unknown. Um, and I take less of a risk on unknown factors. Yeah, the, the yeah, exactly what you're saying, DMC. Uh, base, yeah, ARC has, a, has bought into this quite heavily. Uh, in the early stages, and a lot of people are just kind of picking backing off of that as of right now. Very interesting. Uh, I st again, again, I bought into it actually right around this range here. Uh, I had a little bit of it down here, sold it when it hit like around that uh, six dollar range. Um, kind of came right back down, and I've been I bought some more at this range, and <clears throat> a little bit heavier. Um, with some longer dated options going forth with NNDM there. Um, but again, speculative play, this is not a, 
uh, uh, put all your whole account kind of situation in there. <clears throat> um, what do you think about PSTH? I think it's hyped right now on Wall Street Bets. Really, it's been hyped on. I have to, I haven't looked at Wall Street Bets in a while. It's just kind of been. This is looks really interesting. Uh, you can really see this kind of topping pattern here, not not meeting a topping like it's going to come crumbling down, um, but more or less this Fibonacci number around twenty six nineteen. We've seen a lot of just kind of like it bouncing at the door here, kind of knocking on the door, potentially trying to go higher. So full, you have to understand. Uh, PSTH is not like a normal SPAC. It's structured a little bit differently where it's not the generic $10. It's actually started out around $20, I believe, $20 or $21. Um, and it's a little bit differently um, um, structured in the sense of it really pays people um, if they hold through the merger. So this is not kind of one that you will see like uh, uh, space or really like an NIO not not trying to say in the company but just more or less um, uh, it's really the the best understanding on whoops am I talking my bad there we go all right thank you thank you GTFO um, <laughs> uh, it's always a delay um, with PSTH um, of course, this thing has been just bouncing off that level we just talked about around 2619 and has not really been able to get through that. Um, um, that being said, uh, it, it's something that I'm invested in it and I, we got in it pretty early because, uh, again, um, it's got Bill Ackman's name behind it, the Silver Fox. Uh, you know how much I love the Silver Fox. Um, this is definitely one that could be breaking out because it does have a squeeze set in place here. Volume has been pretty much, uh, uh, pretty much ramping up here. The really thing is, is like, uh, it's really hard to technically trade these packs because it's literally just kind of like dormant and just hibernating until it gets some kind of news. It's almost like a pharmaceutical stock, um, and really seeing that come through. If we do break out, and since we kind of have broken some of the parabolic SAR dots already, um, we could easily see um, if that breakout or any kind of good news comes at around 28.94. So that's going to be the next level on the Fibonacci tree, um, and as well up to 33.99. To the downside, we're going to see some initial support, as we've seen before, around the 21 EMA, kind of coming down to around that $25 range. But again, be full, fully understanding that this thing does bounce around a little bit with, with whatever parts of the market again. Of course, uh, people are giving a little bit of premium on it because it has the Silver Fox, aka Bill Ackman, tied to it. And there's some rumors and speculation that they're going to be buying, uh, they could potentially bring a Robin Hood. I heard everything from uh, uh, Stripe, um, the uh, whatever else. I, the, the, the list can go on and on. They're, the, basically, their they're, uh, bullet point stock is finding a, uh, an early stage company that's ready to IPO, something that is a high growth, um, new age kind of investor or, or new age like market kind of category. So that's very broad. So this is, again, this is the one you just kind of buy a couple shares and you just let it sit and you just see what happens until some news kind of pops out. So this, you check on this every once in a while to see if there's any kind of news on it. Um, Perma, can, can, can we take a look at food? I love food. Like, I don't know about the stock symbol, but I know I love food. I bought it at 8.15. What do you think is a good time to take profits? Thanks. Sure, let's look at food. Um, that's not pulling up for me. It stopped trading. F-O, is this F-O-D? Is this a US based company? Yeah, I'm sorry, food. It looks like it stopped. Maybe I'm, yeah, it's not pulling up for me. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> A uh, rolling one. What's up, my friend? Um, you want to look at LG 
VW. That is another SPAC. That is the the SPAC, I believe, that uh, uh, Bill Gates went for. Um, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. That is an interesting one. This is another one where I kind of threw a couple of shekels in because uh, I know, I believe, ARC has also uh, purchased this as well uh, pretty aggressively around the $15 to $14 level. And we've seen that really kind of hold that 21 EMA with that squeeze ensuing, really popping higher, really, again, selling off today because, again, it's a SPAC um, and it's been a very much like a, um, more or less like let's just kind of wait see what happens again with these high growth names and SPACs people kind of just kind of have ADHD and just kind of move left and right um, and really kind of go um, a very interesting matter in the sense of like hey uh, is it really going to pop or so forth like they are merging with a medical device company I believe I forget the exact name of the company I remember just seeing a dragonfly on it um, but that being said, uh, I do like it. Um, I do like it if it does come back down to $16.80. Basically around the 21 EMA, I think this is definitely something that uh, could be getting interesting as well. Um, since this is somewhat of a, has some more ownership with again, ARC buying it. So it kind of gives it somewhat of a check of a, uh, okay of approval kind of thing. Um, could you do a fib on AAL? I'm in it at 16 and I'm going to be put a stop out at 15 because I can't even win them all holding 500 shares. Is that American Airlines AAL? <sighs> yeah, so this one, interesting, you say 4.15.50. So that's basically around the 21 EMA if I get that correctly. Um, this one again, it's all about the news um, and the overall, like, is airlines going to be coming back? Like, um, American Airlines, I believe, is more attuned to business travel. Um, so it has had its moments in the spotlight. I think it, the play is still somewhat there in the sense of um, playing the recovery stock in airlines, especially um, if we really start seeing things ramping up towards the summertime of next year, 2021. Uh, I think we definitely could see some positive news within the airline industry and see a potential breakout here even higher. Um, that being said, it really comes down to a lot of fundamental analysis on the sense of what they what their debt load is, how many planes they have, and their margins regarding on the seat capacity and things like that. Um, a little bit more of a, a harder play for me individually. I would be buying jets. That's what I would do. Uh, that's what I am in. Um, that being said, it has some initial support around, again, that 1530, 1550. Um, that which you talked about, which is a good level. It's a 200 EMA. You kind of have the 34 potentially perking out here. Um, some key levels to potentially see for a breakout is basically right above the 17-ish to $18 level, um, and then potentially trying to test 1952. Um, with that being said, some lower levels of support could be around 1330 as well if we get a significant pullback in that level. Oh, TSX. I don't know what symbols you're giving me. TSX so food. Dot to. I'm not I'm not finding those, my friend either. What's up, Wesley? Thanks for stopping by. Um, but do but do. Um, your thoughts on Alibaba situation? So, <sighs> Alibaba had that Chinese uh, red flag, um, basically saying. Hey, yeah, uh, you don't mess with the Chinese army or the Chinese uh, um, government. Um, <laughs> they they slashed the and deal. Um, my only concern with this one is that even with the after the ant deal, it had somewhat of a pop, but then it kind of came right back down and really kind of gave a lot of it back. Um, with this being said. Is it water underneath the bridge? I don't know. I, this is definitely oh, it's a Canadian. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, think or swim doesn't pull Toronto stocks. I'm sorry, my friend. I'm, I apologize. I'm sorry. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I don't trade Toronto. I don't think you even think of someone pulls. I don't even think, yeah, Tastyworks pulls things from Toronto. Um, I apologize. Um, back to Alibaba. This thing has been kind of worn in the downward trend, um, basically looking for uh, continuous downtrends. We have seen some upward movement. Um, that really huge drop off that we saw just the past couple days, um, kind of getting somewhat of a, a bounce back. I wouldn't call it a V-shaped recovery um, because we're not really out of the water. We're still um, really much underwater and really not in the world's greatest situation in the understanding of the transparency of the Chinese government. Like, are they really going to be telling us what happened or what didn't go wrong? Like, it's definitely a interesting trade to be to be said. If you're technically looking at it, that like 220 to like that 210 level has been support in previous breakouts. But I'm a little skeptical here just because it's a Chinese stock and um, the red flag can basically can do anything over there and that can really hurt anything. And with that being said, we could see it potentially up to $244, which would be a FIB number, um, but then really testing that level around 250. If it can really get, if it really has the strength to come back, it really needs to break above 250 and get the five and eight start crossing through the 21 AMA. That can potentially kind of put some, put a lot of strength in the stock and really show its true colors on where it potentially could be going and really just show its uh, uh, momentum potentially to go higher. Um, with that being said, this is somewhat normal to see this kind of a bounce back after a large correction like this. Because again, if we look at this from this high to this low, we're probably going to look at like the 50% retracement, um, which is the, okay, look at this one. Look at that, folks. Can't make this numbers up. Um, from that swing high to swing low from that gap down, we hit exactly that 239-ish range, basically uh, by a couple pennies. Um, and really just kind of gave being a Q, uh, a Q, uh, sorry, significant level for it to potentially try to break higher here. And especially kind of holding around that 50% retracement around $234. So that being said, I'm not going to be jumping out and just going for this one right away because it's it has been beaten up and it's been beaten up for a really good reason because it's been hit by the Chinese government. Can you please look and review ELYS stock? Thanks. ELYS. Whoa. <laughs> what is this company? Okay. I don't know if you guys can see this on the screen. I'll, I'll make the, the bigger, bigger video. So I got my little book here. Uh, I got my little pen. This is actually from, I believe, Rome. Uh, that's in Italy, if you guys don't know that. Um, the It's got nice little pages on it. And I got my cute little pen for it. And you know, I'm gonna, if you see me writing things, I'm gonna be writing this one down because that's an interesting stock to be looking at. So completely blank, completely brand new. And the first stock I'm writing in my little, it's, not, it's actually not black, it's my little brown book. Um, and we're gonna write in ticker symbol E L Y S. And we're gonna put a star next to it. That is an interesting one without a doubt there, my friend. Um, dollar 36 a couple weeks ago and then now up to seven dollars um it's been holding that five and eight moving averages pretty well here the parabolic ser dots have kind of been swooshed around here let me go back to the main um so they've been holding that five and eight moving averages quite well been kind of kicked around here a little bit initially this can come back even down to four dollars and 34 cents and even down to three dollars and 63 cents and this trend will still be intact for the most part but again thank you thank you for bringing that one by i like that one um, with some fibs to be looking at here, let's go just kind of do a uh, potential targets we could be looking for if we get a breakout. So again, support around $5, 520. Um, if we can stay above the 21 or even the 34 EMA on the daily chart, we could potentially see $9 and 25 cents would be some targets all the way up there. Ask 
Alan, what's up, my friend? Howdy, howdy, howdy. And do, 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 do. Uh, ACM says Roland one. Um, what is this one? Okay, this is an, I don't think I've ever seen this one in my life. Um, let's do this. Fib. This is an interesting chart. Interesting. Oh, click please. Thank you. Kind of coming down. Last earnings look like a pretty one. Fairly well. Previous high around $53, and it didn't click at the 53. Please click at the 53. There we go. 5320. And man, come on, take us one. There we go. Um, kind of coming down, making an interesting pattern here, kind of making somewhat of a kind of a cup here. Potentially, if we start seeing the five and eight cross through the 21 EMA, we could get a pushback higher. Since we've already broken past the parabolic SER dots, the like stage one of the rockets are, are starting to ignite uh, and potentially could take off here. Um, initially, it has some really strong support here coming down here because again right around the $46.48 the reason why it was support and resistance you can see here previously uh in the month of uh what is this uh end of uh September into October, it's kind of been beating at that wall, kind of came down, came back through, knocked on the door a couple times and then broke through and really br uh, racked up higher here, potentially coming down here, giving that same level a little good night kiss um, and potentially seeing it potentially test that level around $53. So the risk and rewards pretty good here if you want to be just selling some premium potentially with options down here or putting a stop in around that $46.50 range and potentially letting it ride up to that $53 three to fifty four dollars to the upside um, to kind of do like a uh, a risk to reward of three to one or three to one uh, yeah yeah three to one <laughs> Alan yes don't mess with the bear uh Earl G what's up what's up what's up my friend um thoughts on BA and STWD yeah, let's look at BA. I wish I have that I had alerts on this one. Oh my gosh, I haven't. All right, let's see here. I want to put an alert here. Look at that one. So this one, this this honestly, uh, I think Earl, I think we talked about this before, that it looks very much similar to the the stocks or, or, or the overall airline industry, even though it's not a true 100% airline company. Yes, they do a lot of components, they make a lot of commercial planes, but they also do a lot of things for the uh, military as well um, that are kind of like secret, uh, top secret kind of stuff. Um, with that being said, it's kind of just had a huge run higher. Now potentially going to be trading sideways here a little bit um, around the like 216 to like the 215 range. As long as it stays above the 34, it can come down to like the 205 to 2 ish rare, uh, um, area as well. And the trend will still be somewhat fine. Um, but this is just kind of dormant. Um, we are seeing some of the RSI kind of holding steady. The volumes on oscillators trying to get out of negative ter territory as well. So we could see that little pump up higher and really see to break above, back above the $225 level with again, the next target really is around $267 to that upside there. Um, and then you had another one. What was it? Oh, I almost kicked my book on the floor here. Um, what was it? STWD. Starwood Properties. This is the hotel. This is an interesting play. Um, this is, I like this company. If I remember, I listened to the CEO on like a very long talk. I forget. Very interesting guy. So how he started the business. I actually like this quite a bit here um, with no squeezes in place, but the overall uh, moving averages are looking pretty good. Um, let me look here on this chart. Yeah, I, I kind of like this one. So looking at here, the trend has been very nice. It's been staying above and just kind of continue to grind higher here above 1917. That's going to be like your short dated support if that comes into there. But with some longer dated support really coming in around 1696 or $17 if you just want to round up a 
four pennies there. Um, but yeah, this is a good looking uh, one. So I'm actually gonna write this one. Oh, I just dropped my pen. Uh, in the the old uh, brown book as well. So thank you for that. STWD, Starwood. Thank you, appreciate that. Thank you for your ongoing support. Um, Hudson says QS dot 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 dot. Yes, QS. That really took a hit today in the last couple days. Kind of just kind of looking for some uh, sideways going action here. Um, of course, uh, I don't know GTFO. You're still in this one as well. I'm still in it. Um, bought some shares. I believe around 38, maybe maybe less. Um, and really just been riding up this roller coaster as we call it here um with this huge rocket here um this could easily come back down to 80 dollars or 77 dollars and the trend will be just fine with qs um, we are hitting some overhead like support here around the 122 level um, of course that all-time high around 130 so this would not be too much out of the ordinary if we just trade sideways trade water um, would love for it to go higher, but most likely potentially could be coming back down to the 21 EMA. Um, so looking at this chart as well, that trend is looking very strong here. Um, the trend is still really trying to kick higher, but we have some short dated support around $90 and then coming down to around $76 on that chart. Oh, you, you got out? Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'm just writing it up a little bit. See what happens. I took more than my initial investment out of it. So Jonathan says, what's up? What's up? Um, uh, Royland says, AI, is it the ticker symbol AI or are you talking to someone named AI? Um, so this one as well um, had a huge run up. This is, has not been trading for more than a month. So you can see here, there's not that much information for us to kind of pull off for the technical analysis here, but we had a pretty large move just right out of the gates here and really just kind of cracked higher with this IPO level. Um, again, within the AI section, coming down here a little bit, we did break the parabolic SCR dots. This thing wouldn't be too much out of the ordinary if it does come back down to around 130 to 127. It can even come back all the way down to 117, 115 that you shouldn't really blink too much of an eye because that really large explosion out of the gate uh, is something a tail sometimes. So this definitely could um, really just use, all, use up all its energy and potentially try to come back down and kind of level out here as well. Um, three, uh, don't less, most uh, this is open. Yeah, open, so that was IPO B. Um, this one as well has had some little bit of a rocky moves the last couple days, again, a lot due to a lot of these high growth names really just kind of selling off and just people taking profits, rolling into IPO C, IPO D, or whatever other IPO Jamath Papatil is putting out here. Initially, Pretty strong move here, really strong down day, but it really kind of came back and recovered pretty hard, kind of off that uh, the 50 uh, SMA here, uh, and really seeing that potentially bounce higher here. Um, would like to see the five and eight moving averages on the daily chart, try to stay above the 21 AMA, and really kind of play those cards out from there. Um, initially seeing this kind of maybe rebound here, I'm not gonna say it's gonna be like a V-shape recovery because I can't predict the future, but would like to stay, like to keep this above $24, again, the 34 EMA. But again, if it wants to come back down to $21 and like 75 cents, I'm not gonna tell it not to. Um, I just want the trend to continue to kind of grind higher because I do also own shares in this stock as well. Hey there, what's just happening? I'm in Square and bag holder with 155 shares where is your opinion of support what, what do you think it will hit um so yeah i just did a short uh youtube short on that one um looking for square here 
which we've seen to kind of pull back to these levels before. Um, it kind of hit off that 34 EMA as of today around 210. Um, that doesn't mean that it's gonna can't break through that. Um, but with Square potentially, if we do get the five and eight to cross through the 21 EMA, which we've had that happen here and here, um, we could see it come back down to, you see where my alert is around $200 to the downside. But if we do kind of kind of get a bounce here around the the 210 to the 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 200 level, uh, we can see a nice little uh, potentially we we'll like to see somewhat of a base building, um, and really try to go higher with the key target still around 250 to the upside. So those are going to be my potential targets for SQ, and I actually just uh, sold some premium in this one as well today because again. It just kind of gave some uh, flags for potentially selling some puts in this one. So it took some opportunity there. Uh, Coco Du says NIO and XPEV. So I just did a short on these as well because I got a, so many, so many questions about it. Um, NIO, this one, what a move this year, what a move. Uh, kind of coming down here to kind of make a double bottom here, hit pretty hard off the 50 day and the parabolic SAR dots here and really trying to push higher here. Um, looking for this particular to try to test and break above 47.82. If it doesn't, we could be seeing it trading around that $45 range and potentially come back down to that 42.86. Um, with the other one, the X, uh, PEV is kind of a different scenario since the 5 and 8 have already crossed through the 21 EMA It's kind of made a little bit more damage than NIO and the parabolic SAR dots are still kind of keeping it down We really need to see this one really try to print higher to at least that $44.50 range to really get in that same kind of potentially trend reversal kind of matter here But we do have some short dated support around $37.77 if that really breaks we're gonna be saying hello kitty to around $31 to around $28, $88 there as well. Um, FBT you're asking for? Um, first bank exchange, trust. okay, that's a kind of a weird switch there. Um, this one kind of looks like a pullback today as well, but it, look at what it came down to. It came down almost exactly to the 21 EMA and the parabolic SER dots. Not sure if this was news related or whatsoever, but this has had some pretty steep like uh, uh, pullbacks in its past. So that's kind of be someone in the deck of cards potentially can come back down to the 165 would be a nice level of support potentially to uh, sell some premium on. John says F-U-B-O. Um, yeah, this one, this is the, the, the live streaming sports thing. I remember this coming up a couple weeks ago and wow, right? What a move. Really saw that come up. We had some targets around $67 if it really wanted to reach these very high escalated levels. With that being said, it has not reached that, and it came down pretty dramatically the last four or five days. But it's coming down to around the 21 EMA here on the daily chart as well. Um, so that's going to be the first, again, initial support here. Uh, we want to see on how the 5 and 8 moving averages road react to this um, and potentially see the stronger support coming around $30. So there is some more downward potential that really stronger level is really going to be around that $30.75. But that being said, if the overall market wants to continue going higher and this, the money in the growth stocks and SPAC stocks want to go back in, um, this thing could easily jump back up to around that $44 level. Mo, can you do uh, Amazon? Yes, we can do some Amazon. Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Like we talked about in the video, it's kind of been somewhat in the hybrid mode and not really been able to really break out again. It is really trying to break out, out here around that $3,336 level, which we've seen it potentially fail here before. Um, with that being said, if we do get a significant breakout here, we're going to be potentially trying to test that 3,500 level to the upside. Um, with that on the flip side, um, potentially looking for some downward support around 32 
32, 38, and then around 3,100. Um, we have some pretty substantial support uh, across the board around $3,000, um, which we have sold premium on this for quite some time around that level. So this is a nice little premium trade there as well. But this look, this is really looking like, especially here on the weekly chart mo, it really wants to break out here with a very, very distinctive kind of a base here and kind of building a cup and handle here, potentially could be breaking out to that $3,500 level there as well. But again, keeping on our short leash, we know that I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell you if this process is gonna to go to 4,000 or if it's gonna go back down to 3,000. I don't know. But that being said, uh, I think I'm very, I, I own some, I'm selling some premium in Amazon. I have forever. And I think uh, since the shares are pretty highly priced and buying one single options is really out of the book and without, unless I wanna put my, uh, my account in very much jeopardy. Cause again, just buying one options to try to play earnings run up. Um, even if it's out of the money, and which I normally don't like to do, we're talking around seventeen thousand dollars. So it's going to be uh, so a little bit str more than I want to put my three percent, four percent, maybe even five percent minimum in my account into. So yeah. I'm Jared. He says, "Hey, buddy, can we look at your thoughts on CLSK?" Sure. CLSK. My thoughts on this one. Um, yeah, this is one I think Kathy Wood has also been talking about. Am I right? Um, this one looks very interesting as well. Um, really some heavy selling coming in today. Uh, was down substantially around $24 coming down here. But again, it came down exactly to that parabolic SER dot um, and really continued to hold this trend to going higher here. Um, looking for this potentially to continue if it... The thing, the short-term trend, if that doesn't want to continue, especially you start seeing here on this pattern here, everything is still on the uh, the the daily chart. We still have it somewhat going up. We're having a little bit of chop here on the four-hour chart, so that's going to be um, something to kind of look out for. But that could be somewhat of a tell. Um, but uh, if we're seeing this con continuous movement between the five and eight moving averages on the ticks here. Um, we start seeing a close below the, uh, especially the purple line, which is the 8 EMA on the daily chart. That could be somewhat of a trend change, and we could see some uh, downward action around 19 to even down to 1650. Um, but this has had a very large move up with, I think, I wouldn't say significant amount of volume, but again, this stock was a dollar uh, a year ago nearly. So, yeah. Uh, Vlad says bear, uh, SQ is in a bearish sequence. Yeah, I think it's, I wouldn't say bearish completely because it has been pulling back here. Um, just something that I would want to be skeptical. Well, I'm not going to be just buying straight calls for that one quite yet. I'm just going to be selling some premium around that. Um, Mo says TDoc or Amazon. I did... Amazon, didn't I? Yeah, no, you asked about it. Yeah, TDoc is another one. You guys are really pulling out these uh, ARK investment uh, uh, stocks here today. Um, again, TDoc is, I think, really becoming one of their largest plays, I believe, um, for uh, Kathy Wood and their investments across the board. Like, they've been buying this forever. With that being said, it's really been in chop steady mode um, and really just kind of bouncing around, trying to break out here, not really seeing much of any kind of plays here. But again, this thing was, <laughs> this thing was $80, um, just a couple, uh, what am I doing here? I wanna do it. Yeah, really looking to potentially see it kind of move or break out higher above $216. So that was the kind of a, Pretty significant level, which we've seen kind of have it chopped before, but now it's kind of trading in below that. Um, we have some strong support kind of coming around the 200 EMA here in the daily chart here. Um, that's definitely something uh, around the 185 range there as well to kind of potentially look for there. We do have a squeeze setting up. Volumes on an RSI is kind of in hibernation mode. Really gonna see if we do get a bounce here, potentially trying to test that 216, or if we do get a failure here, we could come back down to 187. 
Yeah, it's definitely going to be a more of a long-term play because Kathy Wood doesn't buy trading ideas. They, they're more like the 18 months to five-year kind of play. <laughs> Mo, I'm not... I'm totally just, uh, I'm a chill dude all around. And thank you. <laughs> oh, hold on. My thing just went crazy. Um, I saw someone talk about Apple. Yes, we can look at Apple. AAPL. So Apple, they're making an Apple car. Who knows what's going to happen with that? They had the chance to buy a Tesla. Who knows about that? These are all rumors. Um, nothing really has been like sticking to the wall with that factual, any kind of thing here. Um, and really seeing that play out. Um, initially looking for, uh, again, it's made an all-time high today. So that's a pretty good sign for a stock on that sense. It's, um, once people, I think, uh, get their six hundred dollars stimulus check, or if, if it's to two thousand, I don't even know what the Senate's doing or what the government's doing. Even though I live like thirty-five miles away from them, I I kind of ignore what they say or do. Um, but that being said, um, with that uh, potentially some targets here, um, initial so like short dated support's gonna be coming around one thirty, and then stronger support around one twenty four, one twenty five. But if we do have this trend continuing higher, even if it comes down to 130 and gets a bounce back, we were still looking for 146 to 150 and above for Apple. So yeah, Apple looking looking pretty strong here in my charts. DMC822, did you drink espresso when you went to Italy and stand up and drink it in the gas station and hates the two bit pusher together? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. The DMC 8282, I went there for my honeymoon and I would ask for uh, a cappuccino uh, at the train station where we would go for whatever and we were ride up and down the coastline. I got I got scoffed at uh, and just like, you, you stupid American in the sense of like, you, you know, drink uh, espresso after 11 in the in the morning. No, you don't do it. But I'm like, I'm I'm giving you money. This please give me the cappuccino. I want my cappuccino, my croissant. They're like, they're like, no, that's a breakfast thing. <laughs> you stand out like a sore thumb. And I was like, okay, I still want it. <laughs> um, looking at you, Unity. Yes, I love me some Unity. This is another one that I believe Ark is buying as well. Um, this actually did come down to a level which I wanted to buy, and I had an alert. Maybe I did. I maybe I had my alert lower. I thought I had it at this level. Maybe I had it at the parabolic zero dots. But yeah, this is looking super interesting. Um, um, I'm a little like this again. This is not one that I have completely conviction on since it has only been around for not even uh, one. It's only had one quarter. It's only been around for a couple months this year. Um, but that being said, this trend looks super strong here, holding that 21 EMA, um, potentially can come back back down to run 141 and see on how that one plays out here. But we are seeing some um, potentially I would like to see the volumes on oscillator kind of bounce back here and get out of negative territory to really see a unity kind of break out here. Um, but if we do get a, a break below 142, we could potentially see around 130 kind of falling into the 50 SMA there. Oh shoot, my chat just updated. I'm sorry, guys. Oh shoot. Mm, Let's see. Someone said uh, Tesla. Yeah, we haven't done Tesla. Yeah, that's a waiting for that one to come out. Tesla, I had a, a talk with someone. Who was I talking to? Did I they ever answer me back? No, they didn't. Um, so I was talking to someone on Tesla. Um, they're saying, oh, it's, it's, it's looking toppy. I was like, 
when hasn't Tessa looked toppy to anyone? Like, <laughs> let's be honest here. Um, this always looked like it was going to fall over, but then out of nowhere, oh, we're doing a, a split. Oh, okay. Then it comes back down. Battery day was kind of crappy. Didn't meet expectations. And then now it just kind of treaded water. It looks like it was going to break lower, but then like, hey, we're being added to S&P 500 and then racks up higher. Like I'm just waiting for this to kind of like maybe drag on, build like these super long bases that it has had in the past and it just breaks out and just breaks out and just kind of builds a base and then breaks out. Potentially kind of building a base here. Do I think it's going to hit $700 this year? Eh, maybe. Um, it look that, that would be the path of least resistance if it wants to hit $700. But again, we have like two days left. Um, so Wednesday and Thursday is going to basically those the two days left for that. Um, with that being said, anything can happen, right? Um, it can come back down. So I have I have on my chart some support around the 21 EMA around $620, but this sucker can come all the way back down to around 588 to $600, and that trend will still be continuously going higher. Um, that is something that I'm really looking at um, if it does pull back again. I think people know at this point that Tesla is a pretty large, substantial part of my portfolio. Um, it's actually, it breaks my rules on uh, <laughs> how much of the portfolio could be. Um, it's well close to like 20%, um, but <laughs> it's it's been a fantastic gainer there. So rules are meant to be broken sometimes. A CLDR, yes, I like this one as well, yeah, GTFO. So this had a nice breakout here around 1417 because you saw that top here, top here, then it finally broke out. Um, since it did kind of explode with like a volcano and then shot down its lava, um, potentially coming back down some short dated support around $13.93 but it can come easily back down to that $12.66 to $13 level, and that trend still would be somewhat intact. It's not gonna be the best look for it um, and if it does pull back to that level, because again, it has had, um, it did mark its territory, lack of better words, once it kind of broke about that $14.17, and there has been a increased amount of volume in that range, so we'll have to see on how the potential people are gonna have diamond hands or they're gonna have some selling. So if this doesn't hold, we could potentially see it come back down to $13. <clears throat> AMD, yes, I saw AMD makeshift. What's up, my friend? Um, AMD, this one, what are we gonna do with AMD? Like, this one kind of just keeps you somewhat on like a, a very strange uh, uh, perspective here. Um, it really, it kind of just tricks you. It, it, it does some witchcraft on you. It, uh, the trading gods kind of trick you of like, hey, this one's going to a new a $100. Look all the volume kicking in. Look all these fantastic moves. And then slaps you across the face and says, psych. And then it comes right back down to around $90. But we've seen this <laughs> happen quite often before with like uh, AMD. If Ryan is on the call, uh, if he's in the chat, remember Ryan and I uh, with one of the Discord folks and the uh, YouTube member, um, we were trading this sucker way back here in the summertime when it was just basically bouncing around fifty dollars. Um, with these kind of like plays within AMD and really like TSM as well. They have like these long sideways action patterns and really aggressive bouncing up and down, kind of a ping pong mode. I'm looking for that potentially to ping pong around here a little bit. I just want it to stay above $89, $91. It can come down to $86. I don't want it down at 86 very much. So for that case, I'm gonna squeeze my bull and give him a nice little pet here. Um, again, this is, if you're from not familiar, I have uh, uh, these magical stress balls. So this, the bear was squeezed a little bit too much today. Um, so I had to switch to go to the bull mode here um, on some stocks towards the end of the day. But with that being said on AMD, those are my two levels to the downside. If the five and eights kind of bounce off to 21 here, we potentially could see the 94, but again, 
that holy grail, which we're still looking for, is that $100 or $99.80. So, yeah, that's what we're looking for. Yep, yep. Drew, thank you for the nice comments, my friend. I, I love the explanation. I hope I don't go too much into the craziness of that. I do go a lot too. Okay, looks like I missed a couple here. My chat is, looks like a lot more people are joining here now. Thank you, everyone. Um, we did Alibaba already. We're looking for it potentially if it does want to break higher. It really needs to show its strength here, and we need to see it above uh, like that 250 range. Because um, again, this is somewhat normal, like we talked about in the beginning of the chat here. Um, so to kind of break it down here, we can draw this. Let's just do it here. So this initial day here, uh, when it, before it broke and it had that huge gap down, just watch on where the fibs line up here, okay? Look at that. It came back down. It's somewhat normal. They call it a dead cat bounce. They call it a bear trap. Whatever you want to give it a name. It's a iron clam. It's a chicken piccata sandwich i don't know if you know if that would that would be sound disgusting um but um this definitely came um to initial to break this be around 240 dollars to really see it potentially break higher here um with that being said this it needs to show that strength to break above 240 and then on the daily chart um really show its uh true head uh the if it wants to be a bull head um to really start getting back above that 200 ema on the daily chart to really see that level up there um with that being said to the downside is really going to be looking for initially some support around 227 dollars if that really breaks say hello to $200 there, right? Again, it's within the Chinese government, so disclosures and transparency is not going to be existing, so it's going to be very hard to kind of give it some of a, a speculative bet in the sense of the news related or true information because I don't think true information really exists in that system. Lim, like D, Bing, yeah, this one <laughs> is Ariel on the line. So a friend of mine um, pinged me this one as well, and we talked about it a little bit at, right after hours. And he said he was in for a couple hundred, uh, or a couple hundred, a couple thousands of shares here. Um, and I told him, I was like, hey, it's a FOMO trade, be very careful, blah, 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 blah. Give them the, the generic answers that I, I give a lot of people. Um, but that being said, I told him, I was like, hey, some key FIB numbers I want to give you. And I told him 182 is going to be a FIB level. We saw that hit in after hours trading. And of course, now it's past eight o'clock. So uh, after market trading is over. But that being said, it's kind of hit that level here as well. So we'll see on how this one reacts coming in tomorrow it is a penny stock not really my cup of tea or my cup of coffee here um but uh this definitely is this has some it's it, it's it's really using the fib uh level so it is potentially if it does sell off it could potentially looking for 122 and then a dollar um and then really strong support around 87 cents and then 72 cents so hopefully that was helpful my friend and uh that kind of put you on the right path Yep, let's do NIL. Looks like a lot of people have just joined. I appreciate that, folks, ladies and gentlemen. So NIO, um, which I will potentially see on how it plays out towards the end of the year. Um, so how am I getting the data from where the expected moves could be? Um, it's basically coming from the options market or the, uh, uh, the Thinkorswim. They're using their uh, formula here for around a implied volatility move um, for a price target around $2.40 plus or minus. Um, so again, that basically kind of puts it up potentially um, slightly above that almost $48 range, which we've kind of seen some headwinds there. Really strong headwinds for around $50. Again, that's just a nice round number. For whatever reasons, it's had has had issues at that level. Um, to the downside, 
it's really, <laughs> it came down nearly to that 50 day and the parabolic SAR dots. So pretty strong support around $41.80. This is called a 40, 4150 um, for some substantial support there. We do have a lot of volume coming in today as well. We do have a squeeze setting up and the volumes on oscillator went from negative to positive and you know on how how much uh, how Papa likes that sometimes. Uh, this really wants to rip higher. And if there isn't any kind of negative news around EV trends or anything with the Chinese EV market, because they do have the uh, NIO uh, uh, investor day or their uh, conference coming up in the beginning of next year, this thing could run potentially to $50. That's gonna be the next uh, potential target if it wants to break above 50, guess what the next target is, is around $53 from that level. So yeah, interesting one there. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, yep, yep, yep. Jared, thank you for the five bucks. I appreciate that. It's always appreciate seeing you in my YouTube feed. Thanks for the information, brother. You're very, very welcome. Let's see here. Um, can I buy 100 leaps on live stream watchers? <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> Alan. I love you. Um, UVXY. Yeah, so we can talk about the VIX. Uh, I, I'm not an expert in the VIX. I'm going to be straight with you. I'm, oops, let's look on soybeans. Um, I am not an expert at all. There are people with crazy amount of research and looking at the VIX and especially the volatility. Uh, the overall moves that it has. Um, on the charting's perspective, we are in a squeeze, which is, it could go up or down again. With the VIX, it's really the, the fear gauge and how aggressive the market is really pulling up, or sorry, really pulling down. So in theory, if the market's really selling off, uh, the VIX will normally be up. Um, basically, potentially a lot of people are hedging their bets, buying SPY puts uh, or SP or Q puts or whatever reason they're trying to potentially head their position. People, some will just times buy the volatility index as well. Um, of course, you saw that uh, with astronomical amount of levels, again, due to the crisis that we saw um, uh, with the pandemic and the, and the virus basically levels that we haven't seen for in years um, because if we go back here all the way to the monthly chart um, it really broke levels even in back of 0809 so and if you remember 0809 if you were even around that time trading it was pretty cray cray um, I was just trading uh, and really getting into just uh, uh, I was more of actually I can talk about this story some other time, but I was really much uh, a closet bear um, where I would just find out stocks and just short them. Um, and I was real, I did well at times with it being a closet bear, but then some days I just got my face ripped off and I wasn't really consistent with it, but whatever. But I remember this time very directly because I made money on it because I was short a lot of things. And um, anyways, but yeah, that, that this is a once in a decade or once every couple of years, we see the VIX really jump up at, to these very, very, very high extreme levels. So this doesn't happen on a daily basis. So is it going to go back up to $80 tomorrow? I don't think so. Yeah, I thought that the banks were going to fail. Everyone went crazy, all kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely insane. Um, NNDM, yes, let's do NNDM. So that's also a uh, one that has been very, 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 very highly requested as well. Um, especially with NNDM, this is the Israeli uh, 3D uh, chip, uh, 3D printing uh, manufacturing company. They have some very unique technology, I, I've been told. I haven't seen it with my own eyes. 
um, but it has had some interesting uh, uh, um, technology going forth. Uh, it caught the in, uh, investment eye of our lady friend, uh, Kathy Wood, and it has been performing fairly well since that level, um, holding the 21 EMA, which is the yellow line here as well, really looking for some very short-term support around $8.09. Since it's just had a public offering, I believe it was at $7.50, um, DMC8282, I think he wrote earlier that it was maybe $758. I can't remember the exact offering, um, but it went really well and it was a very bullish move upwards here, continuously going here between the five and eight. With that being said, with these very aggressive and I wouldn't call it a FOMO name ish, but it's definitely has had a lot of momentum and a lot of more uh, newer folks coming into here, um, maybe with not so diamond hands as some investors. So this can come down if there's any kind of pullback um, for whatever reason in the overall market or just for its company, um, we could potentially see some levels around $7.25 to around $6.93 is going to be a nice initial support there if it wants to really continue going lower that next level is really going to be coming in around five dollars and 32 cents so uh, be very very mindful of that of those two levels because again to the upside and being more on the optimistic and bullish side which again full disclosure i have calls in this and i own stocks so uh, I, I do want this to go higher um, but i had to be fully understanding of the risk up and down and really understand that um, this really thing could sell off if it really wants wanted to because it has had a pretty substantial move higher but again we'll see how that plays out um, with that being said um, the next target is really going to be around 1050 and then really looking for some targets around eleven dollars and 42 cents it's, it's really its next uh, fib move but I wanted to do some more Fibonacci analysis on this and I'll be doing a video um, probably tomorrow morning on just kind of doing a, one of those YouTube shorts um, within 60 seconds and explaining some key Fibonacci levels from there. Uh, Bitcoin is popping, isn't it? <laughs> wow, insane. Yeah, it hit 28, oh wow. So with Bitcoin, the next target is $3,900, $39,000. So let's see if that happens, boys and girls. Let's go. Mm -mm. Oh, right. Looks like IMMR. Let's see what that is. That sounds very familiar. ER. What did I hear from? Is this from the live stream this weekend? Where did I do this one at? This is very interesting. Did I own this? No. Whatever happened here, that's a fantastic move there and really saw it really kick higher here. Initially hitting its uh, a fib level here around $13.80. Um, with that being said, um, if we do have a pullback, uh, the next first level support on the short term side is going to be around $12.15. If that doesn't hold really strong support around nine dollars and 86 cents but the next really key target if it wants to break above 1380 it's going to be around 18 dollars and 56 cents so be very mindful of that one again this whatever news came out today it was fantastic and a lot of people got super psyched about it um chris Zucchini, I might mess that up, but it looks like zucchini to me. But I'm dyslexic. Uh, BNGO, yes, you're like the fifth person that bring that up. I'm an arrow must be pinging everyone about that one. Um, BNGO, this thing, like I talked about, um, potentially uh, we had some fib numbers around one dollar and eighty two cents. If that doesn't hold, we can see it come back down to one fifty, even down to one twenty two with some very substantial support around 87 cents to 72 cents. So mindful on that one. Mm -mm. 
thank you guys, everyone, for coming out. This has been fantastic. I Hopefully, uh, people are learning something. Uh, and I'm trying my very best to get to some of the stocks that we haven't repeated multiple times. Um, MVIS. Yeah, I've seen that one come up quite a bit as well. I'm not sure what the company does, but I've seen this quite a bit of uh, um, activity on this stock with a huge breakout here with, again, that uh, huge volume candle here in the back. Um, so normally um, these are called like the FOMO middle fingers. So you have the first volume bar, which is the knuckle here, the ring finger right here. Then you have the middle finger, which is that huge explosion of volume um, going here with that price here. Then you have that middle knuckle, and then you kind of have it drooping lower. So potentially with this huge move higher, again, I'm not sure what the company does or what the news on this article was or the stock was. Potentially this could be kind of uh, trading sideways around $6 and maybe making it, if the five or the 21 and 34 don't catch up with the falling stock or the sideways action, this could come back down to around that $5 to around $4 and uh, 50 cents uh, if it doesn't get any kind of uh, move higher. Because again, this is usually a sign of potentially uh, extreme FOMO and we'll see how that one plays out. But um, you kind of seen that in the past here as well. Um, especially with this one, you have that nice middle finger volume bar here. Again, that knuckle right here on this blue volume bar. Then you have the middle finger on that one and then the third knuckle there uh, and really see that pattern playing out again. It kind of traded sideways here for a little, little bit, waited for that 21 to catch up and then got another boost higher. That potentially could happen with this one again or it can just kind of come crashing down. But um, very much potentially going to be trading sideways and but looking for some kind of a somewhat of support before it tries to kick higher from there. So hopefully that was helpful for you there as well. Zach saying Bitcoin's going to hit 100K, mark my word. <laughs> Zach, I think you and 10,000 other people are saying that same thing. I got a little bit of uh, stuff, so yeah. Um, someone's, um, uh, let's see here. Trader Joe, thank you. We are learning here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, V says, uh, would you please make a video on the basic thinkorswim setup? I use TD and just download the software to my PC. It looks challenging. Uh, yeah, I, I would love to do that. I would love to do a, um, a tutorial on setting up the charts or kind of understanding the basics uh, how to of think or swim i think i think i should do that let me write that in my book think or swim or toss setup would you be more interested in the setup or you want more of a tutorial on like all the the doohickeys within think or swim I might just do both. Let's just do both, right? It's kind of like, sir, do you want uh, bread tonight with your meal, even though you're having pasta? I'm like, yeah, I want double carbs. Let's go. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and go to OSTK. OSTK is overstock. <sighs> this one I kind of have like a, a bad uh, relationship with. Uh, this thing has hurt me multiple times in the past. Uh, it's like a, a, a bad sore, a bad sports injury that keeps on coming back and hurt me. Um, with this being said, we have some initial support around the 200 EMA. We kind of have broken past that, but technically speaking, I'm not a pure, pure chartist in the sense of like, oh, it, it missed it by one penny. It's going to fail. Um, no, it's more of an art form in the sense of like, potentially holding that $53 level um, or 5260 really. If that doesn't hold and we get some significant downturn, then we have to be somewhat more cautious going through here. Um, with that being said, um, let me go on to this chart to kind of give you a better, per yeah. If it starts breaking below $48.27, 
that could be potentially some negative territory going through and seeing some selling coming through and potentially coming back down to $40 there. So be very careful on that one. If we do get a bounce here, it really has a lot of overhead pressure around $67. And you kind of see that action kind of going through here with the moving averages. It's kind of not really staying above the 21 EMA. The, the 5 and 8 cr cross through of it for one or two days, but then come right back down. Cross through for a couple days and come back down. So maybe one nicely to sell premium. Um, makeshift says L-I-D-A-R. L-I-D-A-R. Did I miss that one up? L A D I R. L I. I don't see that one makeshift. Did I, I spell that one right? L I D A R. Or is it L I D A R? Is that a stock? Oh, it's V L D R. Okay. Is it this one? I think it's this one. Um, so this one, interesting, uh, looks like a SPAC here as well, um, VLDR, initially looking for, again, very choppy markets here. It hit really hard off that 20 to me. I kind of like that, honestly, makeshift. This is the stock you're talking about. I might have to add this to my, uh, my brown book here as well. So thank you. Pretend to lick pencil, even though it's a pen. BLDR, put a star next to it, make shift. Thank you, my friend. Um, uh, yeah, it's, these SPACs have got hit pretty hard the last couple days. This looks like it wants to bounce off that 21 EMA here around $21.18 um, with some very choppy mentality here. Um, we're looking for, if that does break, we can come back down to $19.30, which I have. I had an initial, uh, you can see I had a uh, move or a... Uh, uh alert there kind of come down to that level kind of see that base building there it really failed hard pretty uh, at 2766 so this one is definitely going to see on how this one plays out and do some uh more researching on that one what's up blue what's up what's up what's up how you been my friend um we did apple already um someone just said <clears throat> drew aal we did aal as well so aal really much is kind of following the overall airline industry so aal really just kind of smooth sailing here potentially gonna try to stay above 15 dollars and really just kind of stay above that 1450 to 15 dollars um, if that really breaks we could see it back down to 1350 um, but really looking for it to potentially to get back above sixteen eighty six and potentially nineteen dollars. Um, but do, but do John K says C E L H C E L H. Um, whoa, very nice. Um, no idea. That's a beautiful looking chart. I've been holding that thirty four to the twenty one EMA pretty large selling coming in today kind of bouncing off the 21 EMA let's see on how it plays out tomorrow I do have an alert out so I must have had this on my radar from the live stream or something um, but very interesting activity going forth here as well um, looking for potentially to stay above 38.43 if this trend wants to continue and potentially test 45 even try to test that, that $50 level from there <clears throat> Um, someone says PFE, was that Brandon? Yeah. Pfizer. Yeah, I don't know what happened to these uh, vaccine stocks. Like we saw this with Moderna, we saw this with the Pfizer, just like falling out of the sky, even though they really accomplished uh, a pretty crazy feat. Um, and really seeing this how this is playing out or not really people were just kind of like uh, F you kind of thing and just not uh, really care caring about the stock here as well. Um, initially having some support around $37.17 since we've pretty aggressively crossed through the 21 EMA here on the daily chart. 
um, we want to potentially kind of build that base here. We're kind of holding that 50 SMA here line, which is the red line here as well, with the little dotted line or, or dash line. I've been told by a couple YouTube comments that's not dotted line, Ken. That's a dash line. A dot would be dots. Those are dashes, Ken. So please get it right. Um, with that being said, um, so 37.17 is going to be some initial support. Um, even coming back down to 31, 35.81, it would be a level as well. Um, if we do get a base building here, again, it's kind of a nice little consolidation mode. Um, we want to see that five and eight to continuously stop pointing down and maybe get parallel and potentially try to bre breach back above the 21 EMA. But there's a little bit of damage here. Maybe we want to see on how the, the dust settles here before uh, we go touch it with a 10 foot pole. Um, but do 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 we did AMD, um, FUBO, we did that one as well. We did that with a TV. Um, most of them are just kind of coming back down to 21 EMA. Um, AMD, I really want it to stay above $89, and it can go back down to 86, but I don't want it to. Um, it can go down there for like intraday activity, but I don't want it to close at that level, please. Uh, Mark B says, yeah, I would love to do a TD setup guide. Um, looking at mine and I like the way yours looks with the candles look the way to branch together. Yeah, I, I, I think I could, the only thing is I can't, I got in trouble. Um, I used to share my chart, but the guy of the company that I bought, um, not these indicators from another one, um, they got a little, little, little fussies. They're like, you, you can't be sharing that. I was like, okay. Um, PLTR. Yes, 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 yes. PLTR, PLTR. Ah, <sighs> PLTR. You just got to say it and, and just get it out there uh, and just really get it. The, uh, the PLTR. Um, basically, when something fantastic happens or bad to say PLTR, people are like, what? I like to do weird things in life. Um, with that being said, we did close below the 21 EMA. And we, and most people know in the short-term trend, me no like that. But it did not break that $24.10 uh, level. Um, if we do get the 5 and 8 to cross through the 21 EMA, we could potentially see this break the $24 to $23 level and see it back down to around the $21 level, even down to the 200 EMA, or sorry, the, the 50 EMA around $19. But again, full disclosure, I am still in my longer term shares in this one. And this is a stock that was $9.00. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, like a couple months ago now. Um, and this is somewhat normal to kind of see this base building mentality and this really ping pong here. It's really just the way of like the trading gods of just saying like, hey, um, really testing the people who are wanting to hold this um, because it is kind of really bouncing around, even though we had the folks on Wall Street Bets and other various in, uh, markets uh, really try to pump this one up. And it really did kind of work for a little bit, but there's not enough money in the world to really pump a stock consistently months and weeks and weeks and weeks. So it, it could dwindle down or here. Um, but again, key on key eye on this one. This is definitely one to watch uh, towards the end of the year into the beginning of next year because we do have a squeeze setting up here. Um, I want to see this really to kind of get back above the 21 EMA to potentially see a nice little break out there. So thank you on that one. Um, Russell says JD, JD.com. So this is kind of strange as well. This again, a Chinese based company. Um, really had a pretty strong move today, nearly up 5.55%. Um, really, uh, this one is, we have, I've sold some premium on this one, uh, around $80, and seeing this potentially trying to go higher here. Um, that $79 to $80 has been pretty strong support. Again, full disclosure, um, this is a Chinese-based company, so... You, you, the, the, who knows the Chinese government can come out tomorrow and say 
we're going to probe you and that stock could fall off a cliff and go back down to $70. I, I don't know. That, that can happen with any stock, let's be honest. Um, but it's a little bit more uh, scarier because of the lack of transparency and just the rules in the sense of like of, of rules of law and regulations uh, when it's China and the U.S. So um, a little bit of a skeptical play, but potentially looking to hold around $80, looking for the next level to test is around $90 and really try to test that $92.50 from all time high. Um, someone said Verizon, nice Verizon. Um, with this one, pays a nice dividend. It looks like they raised their dividend a little bit. No, they didn't. Okay, I thought they raised their dividend. Um, coming back down to the, the 144 EMA here on the daily chart here, somewhat and just kind of just like selling, not a sell-off mode, but just kind of in a very strange activity in the sense of like, hey, this one really needs to kind of base out here around the 58 to, uh, sorry, 50, 59 to 58, 50 level to kind of potentially build a base here. Um, we saw this previously kind of uh, pretty substantial move uh, lower after earnings, even before earnings. Um, looking forward to potentially to hold around 58.50. If it doesn't, we come come back down to 57 here. Um, again, this is not like a Tesla or like an NNDM or like an NIO. This is something, this is a Verizon. This is kind of a boring blah kind of company. So the moves aren't as drastic as they would be with like an NIO. So um, even a move a dollar lower is not crazy, but it is pretty significant when you're talking about straight dividend there. FUBO, yeah, I can do that one again. Um, this is the, the sports one. Again, like we talked about, this one came right down to the 21 EMA here around 35.86. Can it break this? Yeah, it could break anything. Um, it can go back down to 30. 30 is gonna be a more substantial level because we saw that potentially where it broke out. Um, but that being said, it can come back down to even 25. Um, if we do get any of these levels to kind of hold, we potentially could see a nice move higher to potentially the $44 level again. Um, keen eye is gonna be on the five and eight moving averages to kind of see on how that plays out, to seeing if that is gonna be aggressively crossing through the 21 EMA, um, that's usually a sign of maybe potentially testing below 25 to even 22, um, but we'll see on how this one plays out over the next coming days. Um, NVTA, that is something very, I think I own that one. Yeah, this is the, yeah, 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 I know, okay. Nice little bounce here. Sold some premium on this actually today, I believe, yeah. Uh, $41 um, by that, if you don't understand what that means, it's basically I'm selling puts. That means I need the stock to stay consistently above $41 to my expiration, which is about uh, 30 some odd days away. Actually, a little bit more because I think about February, yeah, 51, two day, 52 days, 51 days starting tomorrow. Um, with that movement, we are seeing the five and eight initially cross through, which we've seen it previously happen with a very strong red day. With this really kind of candle here being like a, a hammer, potentially kind of making somewhat of a recovery, potentially looking to see it stay above 41. Um, if it doesn't stay above 41, we could potentially see it around 39 to $38 there. Um, if we do get a base building around that 41 or even the $45 level, we'd like to see it back above the 21 EMA around the 48 to $49 level there. Um, ER says, Amazon, please. Yes, I'm getting a lot more Amazon requests. It looks like folks are back into this one as well. Um, glad to see that as well. I've been selling premium on this one forever because it's just been really much just consolidating in hibernation mode and not really doing next of anything here. Um, with that action being said, we are trying to break above that $3,336 level, really trying to test that all-time high around $3,500. Um, could it hit it? Sure, why not? It's Amazon. They own everything, right? Um, they have data on everyone. They own AWS. They have uh, Whole Foods. They have everything. They, they own so much data about folks in every parts of the world. Um, that being said, um, can it go higher? Yes. Can it go lower? Sure. But it has had 
even though with the waves of selling that we've seen in the last coming weeks and like the, the sell off that we saw towards the beginning parts of November really wasn't that drastic to Amazon here. Um, we do have some pretty some strong support around three thousand one hundred and fifty eight dollars. Um, but we just had a squeeze fire long, so that squeeze could last for a couple days, potentially trying to test that $3,500. Really going to be checking on the overall markets because um, the Amazon is a pretty large part of the S&P 500 and the NASI, um, and looking for that potentially to really push things even higher from there if we do get that nice movement higher. Uh, Richard says EDIT. EDIT looks familiar as well. Um, interesting. Looks like I had some fantastic news here on some kind of uh, pharmaceutical stock or something on a trial. Really ripping higher here. Initially, again, with this large FOMO play, um, again, we talked about that middle finger before. We have that the first knuckle here, uh, and then we have the middle finger on this volume bar here, and then we have the third knuckle going in here. Um, Again, this usually could trade sideways or it can go lower. In this case, it traded sideways and then it had another boost higher. And now we're seeing a little bit, maybe some more stronger selling coming in today because we're, we were down, uh, we closed at 11%, but it looks like it was down even more coming down to around $68 for the day. Since it closed slightly below the 5.8 EMA here as well, potentially looking for some support around its initial breakout around $63.30. Um, if that does want to, if it does want to break, we're going to be looking for the 34 EMA to kind of come into play there. With that also being said, um, to break out, we really needs to get above 95. Trader Joe says Roku, Roku, so Roku. What a stock. What a move this past couple weeks here has been fantastic. Last couple of months, it's been holding that five and eight moving averages forever and just continue to grind higher. Now finally showing its tail and maybe being like, eh, maybe we need to take a break. Maybe we need to pull back a little bit here and we'll see how it plays out. Initially, with a close below the ADMA, just like we just looked at the recently other chart, we could be seeing it back down to $310, $320 with some stronger support coming in um, all the way down to potentially the 268 Not saying it's going to happen, folks, ladies and gentlemen, um, but you have to be very well aware of those levels. Um, initially, a key Fibonacci level is going to be around 370 uh, If that breaks up around 370 that stock could go gangbusters. E Machine 310 says AMC. Ooh. I think I was short AMC. I think I did. Oh, yeah, I did short that. Yeah. The sad thing is, is like, I think wasn't there, wasn't there like a, how do I say this? Wasn't there like a large component in the stimulus bill that they're trying to pass in the Senate and the, or in the government to help movie theaters? And a lot of people are like, why are we helping movie theaters? Um, with that being said, poor AMC. I love going to movies. God bless them. Um, but we could be looking at a double bottom here around the $2.28 to $2.30. That being said, um, if the, the, the selling continues, we can see it back down to its all-time lows around $1.95. So this is something I really don't want to be touching with a 10-foot pole. It's a little bit too uh, too scary for me to go long. I think I sold some calls here around 5 or $4. That's why I remember that now. Let me look that, Let me look that up real fast. One second. I want to double check to make sure I'm telling you the truth. Maybe it was something else. What's the other movie theater? I think I went short another movie theater. I can't remember now. It's it, it's been it's been taken care of and sold. Um, -ba 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 uh, all right, folks, this is coming in hot. Okay, someone says we did Amazon already. Um, let's see. A uh, snow, yes. I snow. What a stock there as well. Um, this thing has been completely, really interesting activity to say the least. 
again, if you don't remember, Snow was supposed to be the IPO of the year. Warren Buffett, uh, the guy from CRM, uh, Mark Benioff and Jim Cramer and all the people on CNBC were like, this thing's going to blow up, <laughs> like blowing up, meaning going higher. Of course, it blew up on the first day, it went up to 320 and then it came crashing down. Um, and then had a absolutely crazy quarter, which I haven't seen in a long bit of time, really coming back down and really making a bat out of a hell scenario, breaking through crazy price targets here and hitting a high of 430. But seeing that large extension candle here, kind of a sell sign and saw that really kind of creep lower here with the five and eight crossing through the 21 EMA, potentially looking for a bounce here uh, or some kind of uh, retention here around the 50 SMA here and this Fibonacci level at $295. Um, if we don't get that kind of support there, we could be seeing it back down to 276. But if we get a level at either of those levels, we need to see the five and eight to cross back through the 21 EMA and as well potentially get a back above 319 to 320. Yes, Cinemark. Cinemark. What is that symbol for that? I think it's the one I shorted. Um, Tony says K T O S. Oh, okay. This is looks like I had a level here and a support level. It looks like it has not been met. This is a very aggressive move higher and continue to grind higher. Let me see. Make an all-time high today. This thing was five dollars. Holy moly! Wow. Wow. What is this? Is this the the Israeli defense company? What is this company? It sounds so familiar. Um, what does the weekly chart look like? Oh, Lord Almighty! Oh, wow. We look at yeah, thirty dollars. So thirty dollars is going to be your next target to the upside. I'm looking here on the weekly chart to kind of give it a better perspective. Um, but some stronger support around twenty five and. $25.08 um, with some substantial stronger support around $23.60. So uh, very great, nice move there. But uh, yeah, give everyone that guy a like. Tony, nice call on that one if you're in that one. Um, AQMS, this is one that I saw. It was a, yeah, I remember this one that's really took off, right? Wow, insane the membrane here. Penny stock, not really my cup of tea here as well. Um, with that being said, uh, I have a target around three dollars and seventy three cents. I don't know how I got that um, movement there, but I have a target out there for some reason up that 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 level with some uh, uh, support around the eight EMA around two dollars and thirty six cents. So good luck with that one. I heard my how Michael Burry is going long AMC. <laughs> I love it. Rumors starting here. Yeah, MR, yes. Stock stock twits is gonna be insane tomorrow for the Bitcoin stuff. Yeah, M-A-R-A, -A, of course, again, being a component within the Bitcoin stuff and blockchain, um, really seeing this potentially to kind of kick higher here. Um, again, with Bitcoin trading higher, we could see this up to $18 to $17.59. Um, with some initial support around the $10.86 range, but we'll see on how far and how fast that really can get higher there. And then Riot, of course, yeah, is it R R I? What was it? Oh, oh my God, I just drew a blank. Yeah, R I O T F. This one's a little bit better performing here, to be quite honest, and has been continuously on an upward trend. Um, really holding that five and eight moving averages, looking for potentially to break above 1674 and actually close above it. Um, that's gonna be a key sign for that level there. 
<clears throat> the low rider, yeah, uh, PayPal and SQ can go to 500. Sure, why not? So I, I own PayPal um, and I love would love to see it up to $500. That'd be beautiful. Um, with that being said, it has it sold off a little bit today. Not as much as Square did. Um, it's still kind of above the it's still above the 21 EMA here as well. Um, potentially looking for if it does continue to sell off to bounce around $225. But the next really key target is going to be around 250 with the hindsight and the movement above 300. So $300 is going to be my my target again. I have I own this stock. I own some leaps in this stuff. Um, within PayPal and $300 is my target for um, towards the end of next year, potentially even sooner, hopefully. We'll see. Um, Greg, so CIDM, what's CI? CIDM. Yeah, I got nothing to say on that penny stock. Sorry, my friend. <clears throat> what specific bi uh, biosciences? What's the ticker for that? B B B Y. Build a bear. <laughs> yes, I forget. I always forget you bring this one up. Do they have the Yoda one yet? I know they did a collaboration last year with, uh, I believe it was the Mandalorian or some kind of Star Wars characters. Um, really, this one. I I don't. <sighs> Like seeing this one, like this is insane. Like uh, we've talked about this one so many times on the live stream this past coming years. Um, really looking for some initial short-term support around three dollars and ninety-three cents. But we'll see on how that one plays out. Um, if the five and eight moving averages kind of start crossing over the twenty-one EMA, we can see how that one plays out. But that is a very interesting activity here. Potentially uh, looking for it, somewhat of a V-shaped recovery there. Uh, PACB, yeah, that's that's a uh, uh, a Kathy Woodstock too, right? Yeah, that's a beautiful looking chart. Look at that move. Came down to the T to the twenty one EMA and just said, "F you, I'm going back up." Wow, beautiful, beautiful looking chart. Wow. Yeah, continue going higher. Is this being, I'm surprised if, if uh, Bill the Berry gets pumped up by Wall Street Bets. Um, Lisa says B-I-D-U. Um, yeah, so this is one as well. This has had a pretty large move higher again in a Chinese-based company. Um, we had a pretty large move with the five and eight moving average continue to grind higher, even though a lot of the negative news um, basically kind of just kind of getting off of that. Um, this is definitely potentially looking to hold and stay above in the short term, above 187. Um, but that being said, if we do get a break here and the moving average start kind of uh, curling over and kind of being in a sell-off mode or kind of a topping pattern, we could see it back down to around 175 and even stronger support around 164. Um, with some key targets to the upside is basically trying to break above 200 um, and really getting above that 210 level there as well. Mark V says CRSR. I haven't done it yet, but I have might have missed it. I missed that one when it first came out. I haven't looked at that one for a while. CRSR. Uh, I don't know if you missed that one yet. I kind of like it here. I'm not going to lie with you. Um, it looks a little negative. Um, it has bounced off the 34 previously. Um, look, look at this. I had an alert here down on $23. Like, 
I never like missed it by a cup. Son of a gun, I'm so stupid. Um, so that being said, I'm gonna put an alert right about here. Maybe I'm actually gonna do a little lower. There we go. I'm gonna put it exactly at this level here. And we do get a break tomorrow. Potentially, it can come back down to thirty-three dollars and twenty-three cents, and I maybe will buy a small position in it because I think, if I remember right, the options are not fantastic in this. Oh, they are fantastic. Okay, they have a lot of open interest. They're pretty wide at some strike prices. Um, interesting. Yeah, I don't think you missed it yet. It's just going to be that uh, FOMO diamond hands haven't really held out very well. And it's just kind of coming down to the 21 to 34 image, kind of just trading sideways. Uh, Samir, we already did AAL and Square. So at AAL, we wanted to stay above like that 15 50-ish range, um, potentially test that $19 level there. Um, for Square, we wanted to stay above, uh, what level was for Square? Uh, was it 210, I believe? Yeah, we wanted to stay at above 210 here, um, but it can come back down to 200 if it really wants to. Um, but that's, yeah, then that wants to really want that trend to kind of continue. Bum, ba -da -ba -bum, bum. Yeah, I'm not really a day trader, honestly, Trader Joe. Like, um, day trading is not really my cup of tea. Um, I'm doing more swing or longer term leaps. Um, but yeah, day trading is not. Uh, I'm not really fast on the on the mouse and keyboard, so uh, and uh, my thought process doesn't work as fast as some of those folks. Um, someone says Jackie Frost is workhorse. Yeah, that's strange you bring that up. I got a, I got pinged about that twice today from someone. Oops. And I'm tired of hearing people saying this is going to get the UPS contract because no one knows. It's the government, okay? Like, it's <laughs> good luck with that. Um, really interesting activity going on here. Potentially, if we can get any kind of uh, side, this has been pretty sideways aggressive action around $21 or $20. Um, if we can kind of can get this kind of somewhat to continue to hold here and, and break out above 25 to 26, those would be a very interesting activity there. Um, to the downside, really going to be breaking below 20 and potentially testing wherever the 144 EMA would lie on the daily chart. Um, just not really the world's greatest pattern right now because, again, it has had um, a lot of negative press on it in the sense of folks just buying it because of the contract and people didn't have diamond hands shook a lot of people out and just needs to kind of recover a little bit uh drink some uh chicken noodle soup and uh, have some gatorade and get that uh stomach back in order and potentially uh make some nice profits uh, into 2021. Mm -mm. Uh, Samir here, we have not done Disney. That's a good answer. I, I love my Disney. So Disney whew, taking on the world, taking on with Disney Plus here, really seeing it ratchet higher, breaking above that $173 level here. Um, over it's basically look at this volume spike up here. Like this is insane here. If we go to this chart here, like look at this amount of volume here. Absolutely insane. We had 88 to 90 million shares traded. We have on average 18. So we nearly did five times the amount of shares because they announced what they, they announced. Guess what? Their memberships for Disney Plus are literally printing them money. 
Um, and of course that has ratcheted higher. They have released multiple new series and trailers they're gonna be doing on Star Wars and Marvel Universe, all kinds of things, and people are super psyched about it. Um, with that being said, in the short term, we have some support around 173 with some substantially stronger, slightly stronger around 165, and then really coming back down to 153. Um, with the longer term targets gonna be around $200 or 199.35 for potentially to see Disney go up there. Um, hey, what is an EMA? EMA is like an SMA, but it is the exponential moving average, not the simple moving averages. It just it skews the day-to-day uh, -day averages slightly depending on volume. I love your, <laughs> I, you make 150 to 200 trades. And, oh my gosh, that is way too many for me. God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Um, but do, but do. Jared, thanks to you for explaining that for someone. Um, Richard said NIO leaps. Yes, I own a little bit of NIO leaps. Um, do you consider four hour interview or 24 hour or five minutes? Um, I love my daily charts. Uh, and then I love maybe looking at four hour charts just a little bit to kind of potentially see on some trends that could be going through. Um, MB63 says worker should have had two persons electric drone got FFA approval in 2019, but I didn't hold that anymore. Mm. TGF says it's going to get that GPS, I hear. <laughs> uh, just joined, have we talked about NIO? No, we have not talked about NIO, but I know a lot of folks have come and gone and uh, the next shift of waves of folks are coming in. Um, with that being said, NIO, like we talked about, really need to stay above that $42 level to really see that move. Potentially the run up into the end of the year, AKA Thursday, could be 47, potentially even testing 50, but it's really just kind of been bouncing around between 50 and $42 and really just kind of waiting to see which way it breaks. If it's gonna go higher, it's gonna break above 50. If it goes lower, it's gonna break below 42. So kind of just sitting on my hands and seeing how it plays out with that sense before I really sell or trim any of my positions on that one. Yeah, I like the EMA because it, it's a little bit more skewed on that front than the simple moving average. The only simple moving average that I have on here is the 50 uh, SMA because, again, most people really most people who are trading technical analysis, even the the hedge fund folks always have like the anywhere from like the 10 to 20 day, the 50 day and the 100 day always in their charts. So this is definitely something uh, that can I keep mindful about. Um, SBE, Michael says, yes, we can look at that one. Wasn't there rumors about Apple or someone buying this company? I thought it was Apple. Someone told me a little birdie, um, potentially looking for this again. This thing has been really playing the EV play here, uh, potentially looking for some initial support around $37. If it does pull to this level, um, but key target is still going to be 45 to really kind of see that potentially try to break out at that level. And then some initial stronger support to the downside around 32. Um, but that trend has been holding pretty strong here on that 21 EMA here. So initially looking for some support around 37.15 uh, there. Um, D King thoughts. Yes. Oops. Put on the wrong button. This one, I think if uh, GTFO is still here, we talked about this quite a few times on the live streams as well on Sundays. It has some support around $47.19. 
Um, it has been in a squeeze quite a bit, but things RSI and the volumes on RSI are kind of coming off here. If we do get the five and eight moving averages crossing through the 21 EMA and we break and close below 47, um, they are definitely a pretty large uh, prob probability of breaking below that 50 SMA and potentially coming back down to 44. Um, I cannot, um, I have a rule somewhere on my, my notepad somewhere um, where I said I cannot trade uh, this stock at all. So, yeah. It's not in the playbook, um, but if it wants to break out, it really needs to break above 53 and close above it with some significant strength, though. Um, R-A-N-A -A says blink. What's that? Is that just B-L-N-K? Um, yeah, same like same thing. A lot of these charging stations are really pulled back to these, these SPACs and everything. Um, really pulled back here. Initially, short-term support around $41. If things want to continue to sell off, we're going to be looking for around $34.84 um, in that levels there with some stronger support coming in around $28.83. With that being said, uh, Target's going to be still looking for around $66 and really trying to get back above $50 uh, in just in the short term. Um, I need a video to help me start off on all this. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to do an introduction video, maybe a setup guide video on the um, Thinkorswim platform that I use. And I also use uh, Tastyworks to trade all my stock uh, and equity positions um, within this little platform here, which I love very dearly. So please stay tuned. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, and I will definitely be working on a tutorial video and setting up uh, like a think or swim guide for everyone. Uh, Joe Trader, that makes 100%. Yes, you have really have to find on what works for you. Not everyone's trading mentality is the same, and they're clearly different buckets. Are you a short-term trader? Are you a long-term trader? Do you like to scalp? Do you like to swing trade? All kinds of different things. Um, you just kind of have to find one thing that really talks to you, and you can play from there. Um, I bought it at what's woohoo is I bought it at forty-four dollars and sixty-four cents. Kind of missed the pop today. Anybody got any advice for tomorrow? Kind of make profits on the targets. New trader definitely a seven. Um, forty four sixty four. Which stock are you talking about? You talking about Blink? If you could tell me what stock about, can kind of give me a better understanding there. Um, but do but do. What do I think about the stimulus package? Um, honestly, I was asking my chat and Discord on like, again, I live not outside of DC. I live 35 miles away uh, west of it, but you're still in that DC bubble and everyone's always just talks about it. Um, but that being said, I have no idea. Like, I would love for the people who need the money to get the money, like uh, the restaurants, the, the frontline workers, there, there's people do deserve and really need the money. Like, so I, I don't know what they're holding it up for. I know, all I know is that Simmons bill is, has, has been ransacked from my understanding with a lot of, uh, other things that make no sense. So I think, I wish they could just make it so, so simple. Okay. Just have it as one bill. Again, I'm probably talking, sounding like an idiot here, um, but just have one bill like, okay, people who make this much and who have been really uh, hit hard due to the pandemic, here's a little bit of money to kind of hold you over and we're going to try our best to get things working. But I guess that doesn't work in the, the government. They have to put in billions of dollars to uh, really dumb things. But anyways, yeah. Oh, you're talking about NIO. Yeah, NIO, we're looking to potentially to hold above 42.
Um, Brad, can we do a quick look at ICLN? And I'm not even trying, I didn't want to get political here, but that's just, I don't, I don't think most people are get too political when they start talking about trying to help uh, the restaurants and the, the really strong uh, communities that really been affected by it. Um, clean energy ETF. Wow, this has uh, been a very nice looking chart here. Wow, <laughs> that was eight dollars. Now it's now. Um, this one looks in interesting. It's a little bit of a toppy pattern here. That doesn't mean it's going to come crashing down here. We have some short term support around twenty six ninety two. Um, with some longer dated, somewhat slightly support around the 2528, um, which could come down to that level. Um, because we are in the top band of the RSI and the volumes and also are kind of coming down, indicating potentially some sideways action and kind of waiting for the 21 EMA to potentially catch up to kind of give it a little kiss or a tap on the shoulder to kind of let it go fire. Um, MB63, Ken, did you do F, is it FII? Or is it FIII? Um, interesting. Uh, this looks like a SPAC. Um, it's going to be very hard. I have not heard of this SPAC at all. I'll be straight honest with you. Um, hopefully your kids went to sleep well. You gave them a, a nice little bedtime story. My like my little girl loves bedtime stories. Um, with that being said, with these SPACs, it's so hard to do technical analysis on it because they're all like $10 and they jump to 12 to 15. And sometimes they jump to 19 and then 20 and they just kind of linger around to wait for the merger to happen. Um, they really need to know a little bit more information on what kind of they're getting into here. Do, 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 do. Um, Trevor, hey, what's up, my friend? And what is your opinion on the retail prices pushing up stocks like NAO and CNBC consistently saying that I have noticed uh, whenever Pete Majorian goes on, the stock is incredibly. Yeah, I know. Is it the Pete is the guy who owns that uh, options trading firm or options algorithm firm that talks about uh, interesting options activity? So he kind of I, I won't say pumps it, um, but something to be uh, interesting about to kind of key an eye on that. Um, I don't know. I, I, there might be a weird correlation on that just because it's getting more viewers on the sense of like, oh, I forgot about it at all. Let me just buy some. <laughs> so. It's hard for me to make a correlation on that. Make shit. <laughs> I know that 100%. I'm like, I don't want to get rid of this. I like this stock. <laughs> um, have you done FUBO? We have, but I can do it again for you. I know you've asked. Um, FUBO. Initially looking for some short-term support around $35, $36. This can easily come back down to $30 and even down to $25. If it does hold around the $35, $36, and even the $30 level, we could get a strong recovery back into the $44 to $45 level as well. Makeshift says Ken was at the DC right. <laughs> no, I was not. I was nowhere near that. I did see some of the aftermath uh, in 2016. Um, when President Trump was elected, it was pretty insane what they did to downtown. Poor Starbucks and the Wells Fargo's and the Bank of America's and the storefronts were destroyed. Uh, let's do a couple more. I'm getting a little bit tired here. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at here. Okay. Um, can we look at H Helion? Yeah. Sticking with all these uh, EV plays. Oops. This thing has been really beaten down too. This has been beaten down over the head. 
potentially looking for a double bottom here on 17. So I did a video on this one a couple months ago saying, I think it was around this time frame, maybe this time frame, I was saying that, no, maybe it was way back here, that it potentially gonna be breaking below 27 and heading down below 20. And guess what, it did happen. And it kind of came came back up, made a dead cat bounce, never got above that $27 range and gave it right all back. And now continuously kind of trending lower here, really getting back to its almost, uh, I wouldn't say to its SPAC level, but uh, I, think it, I think it really just got beaten up too much because it got incorporated with the Nikola stuff, even though they do have uh, some stuff that actually works and actually in production. But yeah, this is something I really don't want to be touching right now. There's too many other opportunities for me to honestly put cash in. Uh, yes, Intel. I'm surprised. I've been waiting someone to talk about Intel. Um, <laughs> this thing has been uh, just really strange year for Intel for this year exactly. Um, with huge sell-offs, comes back, sells off and comes back. Um, potentially looking so to really see a break above $51 to see any kind of staying power since it has been beaten up a lot of red candles on its uh, on its uh, chart here really not the biggest fan of that but if this has any kind of staying power and kind of catching up with the other chip makers it really needs to get some stuff in gear and needs to break above $52 and stay above it uh, we do have earnings on the horizon the beginning of early next year so keep me mindful of that one but this is definitely one to kind of keep a look and eye for uh definitely has pretty strong support around 45 dollars for the downside though what's up fish what's up my friend how you doing um v says fastly wow i have not heard that name in a minute as they say this poor stock has just been I had a level here to try to break above the 108. Did not break there. Kind of selling off again with the last couple of days with a lot of folks have been selling off here. Potentially looking for some initial support around the $90 level. But if it wants to continue going lower, 83 even down to 78 could be a possible level here um, to the downside because again we do get that action between the 5 and 8 not bouncing off the 21 EMA in the next two or three days we could see that potentially cut into the 21 EMA and go lower to the $82 level like we just talked about to the upside really need to see it back above 100 that's really what needs to happen um, yeah Uh, James, I really don't do penny stocks. I really don't, so I apologize. Um, let's see. Can you please check out OKE? Interesting. Um, really beaten down against the pandemic. Some made someone of recovery. It looks like some kind of banking company or something like that. It looks like a very interesting chart here. Uh, initial support around thirty-seven dollars, even down to around thirty-four eighty-six. But we'll see on how that one plays out. Uh, initially trying to break above that forty-eight to fifty-dollar range. Cowboy. Oh, thank you, my friend. Can you take a look at Pinterest, please? And thank you, bro. Of course. And I love my pins. Um, and thank you for the two bucks. So pins, Pinterest, if you don't know, has been a very much one of my favorite stocks uh, for some time here now. Um, it has been pretty nice performer here. Um, it has sold off again due to a lot of the high flyers that we saw just the last couple days here. Um, with that action going through here, potentially uh, testing that $66.25 level. Um, if we do get the five and eight moving averages to cross through that, we could see it back down to the 50 day around 63, even down to 62. Um, we do have a squeeze setting up here, so be mindful of that. The volume zone also is trying to kick higher here. And as well, we have the RSI level kind of in dormant mode. Um, with that very nice movement here, we can flip over to this chart here 
and we can kind of see that trend here potentially trying to change here. There has been damage done with a lot of selling, um, but the thing is, with these large down days, um, we're not seeing that crazy amount of volume. Usually, if there is a lot of selling and people just trying to get out of the overall position, they are just trying to get rid of it no matter what, and they're just literally just slamming the ask um, and really seeing it just kind of sell off here. So initially in the short term, looking for around $64, um, which we just talked about. Um, but really looking for 64 to $63 to hold. Um, if that doesn't hold, we could see some really some steep levels to around the $60 or below. Um, but full disclosure, um, I'm currently in this position as well, um, looking for a potential uh, rebound here, and maybe some consolidation around that 66 to $65 level. Um, if it does come down to the 63, I have a little bit of cash for this particular campaign and this this uh, stock to be able to potentially to add to it, um, maybe even sell some puts or premium at that level. The key target for this one is still uh, to break above 75 and the long term target is 90 to 100 dollars for me there. And thank you, my friend, for the two bucks as well. Uh, Bing Zing, yes, you did miss the analysis on NIO, but I have been very well. Hope you're doing well as well. Um, for NIO, we just need to see above uh, $42. We can potentially see it potentially test $48 to $50, which is, has had some issues before previously. So um, it's just been kind of been trading in the range between 48 and 42, kind of just bouncing around and seeing on which level goes higher or lower first. Um, Richard, how often do I do live streams? Um, I do one every Sunday, um, and then during the week, I try to do at least one, most likely um, in the next coming weeks. I want to do at least one or two during the week, and then one on the weekends. So um, I don't have, the only schedule I have uh, set in stone right now is the live streams on Sunday. And the ones during the week are somewhat kind of random, to be quite honest. I got pins weekly today. Um, you, you bought the weeklies for this week, Christopher? That's a, little, that's, a little, that's a little sassy to get the weeklies here. Which ones did you buy for the weeklies this week? I'm a little intrigued now. You bought like the $70 one? I'm guessing the 70 or the 72. Which one did you buy? Oh, January 15th, okay. Interesting. Yeah, again, yeah. Be very careful because again, depending on how far your calls are out, that theta decay could kill it. So be very careful with that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have January 8th? Oh, you're really buying the close. Okay. Again, that's your cup of tea. It's not really my cup of tea. Oh, it's the 69. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, you got a little bit of time left. Again, it's 10 days. <coughs> Excuse me. So, the theta decay is pretty strong. Um, being mindful of that. Um, the only thing is... Uh, I'm not criticizing you on the stream or anything, Christopher, but I think I can be honest with you. Um, I just want to question why you did this 69, just because you like that number um, or the reason behind that. Um, I would have rather have you seen in the January 15th, just because a um, little bit more activity. It's the monthly expir it's the monthly expiration contract, so there's going to be a little bit more. Uh, turmoil and just more liquidity at that level even though the options contract is a little bit a uh, little bit more higher premium 
Um, there wasn't that much more open interest, but there is a lot of open interest here at 70 currently. I, that's interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I think pins, I think we have the same idea. Long term, I wanted to see above $66, $65 and see it continue going higher from there. Um, do I like ARC stuff? Yeah, I love ARC uh, investments. I own ARKK, which is like their innovation fund. That was a nice little dip buy today around 120-ish for me. And then ARCG is one I just recently got into. Their genomic stuff. And this is one I kind of got into around the $94 level, which I kind of added today. It's not going to be higher. It's not good. So with the the reasoning why I'm telling you that is because the weekly options, you're really kind of a uh, lack of better words, uh, not shooting yourself in the foot. Um, you're seeing the IVs pretty much the same here. They're 59 and 60. Um, the expected moves just a little bit longer. You're giving yourself a little bit more time as well with that with that with that move here um, with that advice. I will start with that contract. But that being said, um, if you're really wanting to play a pretty strong move higher, uh, I know it's going to take a little bit more capital and I don't know what your fund situation is looking like. I would go to like February. Like um, um, it's it's something to be uh, to, to look at that level, like even February and even looking at something a little bit at the money or in the money because um, especially depending on when you bought this contract, um, the theta decay is going to be a little bit less uh, 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 a wear and tear on you if it's in the money. Um, because further away, the money you can already see um, that theta really kicking in here um, at these levels here. Um, especially this is going to be start bleeding pretty heavily because the expected moves only. Oh, sorry, the let me go back to the eighth here. Um, the expected move is going to be like you can already see the 73s are really going down here as well. So the expected move is only five dollars and it's currently trading at $68. So that's going to kind of put it at 72 to 73 dollars. You can already see that really steep uh theta decay really kicking in around 76 dollars because you look at that move down 20, 18, 24, 43 percent. But there's like hardly any open interest out there as well, so that could be a factor there as well. But yeah, hopefully that was a little bit helpful there for you. Um, let's see here. It looks like. Oh my gosh. Okay. This chat keeps on updating here. Let's see here. Uh, PLTR R3 slick. Um, yeah, we did PLTR, but this one is definitely something that we to talk about again, honestly, because a lot more people are just joining, joining the stream. Um, initially looking for some short dated support or the stronger support around $24. Um, if that doesn't hold, this could potentially go lower here uh, and break that 23 even down to that $21 level. But that being said, this has been had somewhat of a mixed bag here. And we'll see on how this uh, potentially kind of plays out here um, with the five and eight kind of bounce off the 21 EMA and we get a nice little push into the end of the year or next week, we can see easily see it back up to 28. Um, hey, what are your thoughts on a R a P R E? I believe it could be bounced back. I don't know how much of it is. Let's take a look. I don't think I've heard that one before. Is that a SPAC? Oh, okay. Yeah, that doesn't look good. <laughs> Could they bounce back? Sure. Um, but looks like they had some kind of clinical trials or something kind of data and it wasn't pretty. And that's exactly what that chart looks like to me there. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't want to want, I honestly don't want to touch that with a 10 foot pole. Um, can it bounce back? Sure. Um, would I want to double down the stock from my perspective? Again, I don't know. I don't trade pharmaceutical stocks like this anymore. So uh, if you're in it, I really do apologize that it 
really pull back on you in like this, but uh, yeah, it's not gonna be too much advice I can give you on this one due to the amount of uh, selling pressure going here. Potentially, if it can build a base here, maybe get some of recovery, but uh, it's gonna be very hard to do some technical analysis once we maybe get a couple more uh, base building days going through here. Uh, Drew says, I and O. This was a vaccine play as well. Kind of selling off, uh, not selling off here, but kind of going lower as well, like the Pfizer's and the MR and the Moderna's. Um, potentially looking for some lowers around $8.37. If that breaks, we could see uh, a so more of a low here around $7.50. But if this bounces and holds, we really need to see that five and eight moving averages. You can see the moving averages are aggressively pointing to the ground here. That's not a good look, okay? We want it to kind of start curling uh, and potentially trading sideways and potentially going higher here as well to potentially break above the 21 EMA. So I'm a little bit more careful on that one. Yeah, Christopher, so basically the biggest thing when you're buying short dated options, if they're under 30 days, um, I normally don't like to buy options within 30 days. They need to be at least 30, 45 to 60 days if they're straight calls and they need to be at the money or in the money for me. Yes, you're not gonna be making the crazy Wall Street bets returns if you're buying like something way out of the money and the stock jumps 200% and that 10 cent options now worth $100. Like those happen every once in a while and God bless you, but most of the times it doesn't work like that. You want consistently stuff. Maybe even look into selling premium. Like, have you, have you thought of that, Christopher? Like selling premium, like, so for pins and just to be a little bit more consistent going back to that scenario, you can be selling premium around 62 to $65. Um, that's a little bit too close to the money that for some people, but you can bring it back all the way down to like the $60 level and to sell some puts on that. Um, we did IMMR as well, yes, um, yeah. So I, what was I am? I remember I don't forgot that one now. Maybe I did, it, did I do this one? Yeah, I did this one. Yeah, this is one that really popped higher here, potentially looking for some short-term support around $12.15 um, and even back down to around $9.84. If this really wants to break higher and the trend wants to continue, we're gonna be looking for around $18.56 to the upside. Um, Kevin, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond for Christmas online sales. I think you're onto something. So I think that this could make an, a pretty strong recovery into its earnings report. Um, initially looking for some support around $7.80. So I'm not a fan of buying stuff going into or holding through earnings, especially options. Excuse me, it can be very dangerous. <laughs> Get tired here, I've been streaming for over two hours and talking and talking and talking. I need to get a co-host here or something. Um, potentially looking to hold around 1775, sorry, 1780. Um, the trade for the week of its expiration is around $3 plus or minus. So that's a pretty substantial move here to be quite honest. Um, so $3 where it's currently trading um, is well about that $21 level, which we initially talked about. So if we do get a nice move higher, that $21.67 is very keen uh, on that move there. Um, QS hold or sell. Um, I'm holding QS and that's just, but I'm a long, I, I bought that in at like a $35, $38. Yeah, XPEV is a little bit different than NIO from my opinion as well on the chart pattern because it's kind of looking at uh, really going below some key levels and it's been below the 21 EMA. True, Drew, you're very true. You can always trade spreads. I always forget about that.
Um, Jared, that's a very interesting question about which stock uh, in 10 years would be in Chinese company would be here. Um, I'm going to honestly say uh, I have no idea. I know what stock that I will be in in 10 years probably still from now is going to be Tesla. So I'll, uh, that's going to be a dumb answer, but that's what I'm going to stick with. Um, uh, SQ, SQ needs to stay above 210 for us. Um, you can come back to 200 though, but, uh, yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, Q, I'm getting a lot of questions about QS here. Um, so QS, QuantumScape, um, has had pretty large moves, especially some selling coming in today. Um, it has some short-term support coming around $80. Um, that would be just fine to come down this level, and that trend will still be just be fine, honestly. Um, let's do a couple more here, and then I'm going to call it a nice... Um, Christopher is saying I have XPEV $40 call for this week. Wow. You're really playing it close there. Um, yeah, your call is going to be in the money. So you're, you're going to be, depending on when you bought it, um, if you bought it this morning or yesterday afternoon, you should be doing pretty well on it. But again, that theta is going to start, it's really going to kick in really fast. Um, Bing says B E E M. Why is this not time? Wow. Oh. Mm. Yeah. That is insane. Wow. I know someone on the live stream was like, can you get into this? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know when to get into this one. Well, fantastic. Um, no comment on this one on where it could go. Um, it has been overbought here for a couple days here. Um, I'm not really seeing the middle finger volume pattern uh, come out yet, but this is definitely something, um, an interesting pattern to come out. This definitely could be trying to break above 70 to $75 in the short term, even even higher. Um, to the downside, we're going to be looking for some short term support, basically coming down wherever the 8 EMA lie, and then stronger support coming into 21 EMA. Um, Chewy, let's do Chewy. That thing had sold off today as well, right? So Chewy, it's coming right down to the 21 EMA here in the daily chart. If it doesn't hold at this level and the five and eight moving average kind of continuous to push it lower, we're gonna be looking around 81, uh, excuse me, 81 to $83. You started beam at seven. Oh, God bless you, my friend. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, Bruce, can you look at N I I think is that the penny stock? Yeah, this is an interesting one as well. Like it's gonna be very hard to stick. These are like completely FOMOs. I'm gonna do this one and then I'm gonna do you uh Tommy uh F L I R, and then I'm gonna call it a night. Um, this one, very much a completely FOMO kind of day trade, a lot of scalping going on here. You're seeing that pattern kind of coming through here. If it does not hold around the $2 level, we could see it back down to around that 175 to 179, um, even down to the 156. Um, this is interesting though, because it has been had these very aggressive falling parabolic SER dots have not broken above it really looks like it needs to kind of build a base it does have this very crazy whipsaw like parabolic move up here every once in a while um, but that being said uh, i'm not sure what this industry is in um, but this is a very interesting stock at least because it has been coming up quite a bit a lot of folks have been asking about it um, initially this could come back down to the 187 but uh, if it does want to kind of bounce here, build a base here around that 190 to the 150 range, completely in the norm here. 
because you can see that it built up multiple times here before um, and just kind of just skyrocketed higher. So yeah, it, it's a little bit too much, uh, too skeptical from, too speculative for me there. Uh, and then last one, FL, oh, why is it a typing? FLIR. Yeah, this one as well has had a little bit of issues around $45. You can kind of see that I've kind of highlighted that a couple times here on some of the Fibonacci numbers here. Um, the overall trend is trying to go higher here, but we've seen that uh, overhead resistance around $45 multiple times here and kind of fail here. We just had that uh, just the beginning of this week as well, kind of coming up to that level and not really getting that uh, foresight to kind of break through it. Um, with that being said, uh, potentially looking for some short-term support around $41 here, um, but with that trend to kind of maybe guide it higher because again, um, that if it still holds above that yellow line, that trend is still intact. It looks like it pretty much uh, could potentially try to break above that 45 because previously we had some very choppy activity going on here, um, even though it had earnings going out, but uh, this is definitely something to kind of be uh, very careful about that as well. Guys, I want to thank everyone. Please be safe out there. I hopefully will, if I don't see you guys uh, before uh, the end of the year, I want to wish and bless everyone uh, with a fantastic, hopefully you guys had a fan, fantastic, profitable 2020 and looking forth to having some fantastic uh, uh, um conversations, live streams, videos, all kinds of things and trade ideas um, for 2021. So again, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe on the way out the door. Greatly appreciate it. Looks like currently the S&P 500's up just about 12 points, NASDAQ up about 42. So they're both up about 0.3% right now. So nothing too significant. So we'll see how tomorrow and the end of the, the, uh, the year closes on Thursday. So remember on Friday, the market is closed for New Year's Day. Uh, need to double check that to be 100%. It might be half day. It might be just uh, equities closed for that day. But again, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please, guys and gals, have a fantastic New Year if I don't see you again. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.